Hello everyone. Welcome to this short tutorial from Pathology Made Simple at ilovepathology.com. This is a multiple part series uh, which I'll be discussing regarding the various pathological aspects of breast. The topic which I am discussing today is the fibrocystic disease. So before that we will just see what is the normal anatomy of breast, what are the functional components and how do we classify the various breast lesions particularly you know I am concentrating more on the undergraduate uh, student pathology okay we will see what you people need to know and today's topic mainly one of the important lesion that is non-proliferative breast lesion we will be discussing fibrocystic disease in detail okay. Now what is this uh, breast? Breast, one of, the, one of the major function of breast is to provide nutritional support to another individual that is the infant, right? So it undergoes dynamic structural changes throughout the life which includes, you know, expansion of the lobular system immediately after menarche and then there is lot of remodeling which is periodic taking place during adulthood and you know various stages of pregnancy and finally it involutes and then regresses in the later stages of life more than that it is a symbol of femininity and has a lot of social cultural and personal importance right so what is this normal anatomy of breast normal anatomy of breast is quite simple to understand it has two major structures it has two types of epithelial cells and it has two types of stroma. What are these two major structures? Which are ducts and lobules. What are these two epithelial cells? The luminal cells and the myoepithelial cells. And the two types of stroma are the interlobular stroma and the intralobular stroma. So let's understand these things in detail. Okay. So basically, Breast is made up of two major components. One is the terminal duct lobular unit, which I'll be discussing in great detail. So this part is the terminal duct lobular unit. And then the next part is the larger duct system. Basically, you know, the ducts which emerge from these terminal duct lobular unit forms a subsegmental duct, then the segmental duct, and then they finally merge into a larger lactiferous duct, which basically opens onto the nipple okay so this is the structure of the breast the normal histological structure of breast now let's see what is this terminal duct lobular unit so this is the basic functional and histopathological unit of the breast it is the glandular unit that produces milk most of the cancers and the benign lesions arise in the terminal duct either inside or just proximal to the lobule okay so that is the importance of knowing the terminal duct lobular unit now this is an interesting illustration from you know one of the wonderful people look at this so this is a duct okay a subsegmental duct then it gives rise to a terminal duct and the terminal duct itself is composed of two components one is the extra lobular which means the duct which is situated beyond the lobule now what is a lobule a lobule is composed of numerous acini along with the intralobular terminal duct a lobule is composed of an intralobular terminal duct a numerous ductule or acini and then each of these lobules will have its own stroma and that is called as lobular stroma or intralobular stroma and the stroma in between these lobules is referred to as interlobular stroma okay remember i talked about two types of stroma right one is intralobular stroma which means the stroma which is present within the lobule of the breast okay whereas interlobular stroma is the stroma which presents which is present in between two of these lobules so basically terminal duct has two parts intra and extra lobular terminal duct so a combination of terminal duct and a lobule is referred to as a terminal duct lobular unit okay now let us see what is seen in each of these ductules each of these ductules you, you can call it as acinus as well it has two types of cells one is the luminal cells which are more of more or less columnar cells okay these are secretory cells and another is abluminal these are called as myoepithelial cells so luminal cells and myoepithelial cells which rests on a basement membrane so this is the basic histology of 
a breast parenchyma another excellent educator on twi- twitter you know he has explained this terminal duct lobular unit very beautifully look at this he has taken an analogy of uh, the broccoli to explain the terminal duct lobular unit okay so that is the terminal duct and that is a lobule histologically look at this so this part is the terminal duct this is a terminal extra lobular terminal duct and this whole thing is called as lobule so the entire component with terminal duct and lobule is referred to as a terminal duct lobular unit another interesting illustration showing terminal duct lobular unit let us see what are all the various lesions which we can encounter in the breast one epithelial lesions to stromal or fibroepithelial lesions it's a combination of stromal and epithelial lesions what are the epithelial lesions epithelial lesions can be benign or malignant right among benign lesions it can be non proliferative lesions it can be proliferative lesions what are these non proliferative lesions the most important one being the fibrocystic change or the fibrocystic disease the second one is a proliferative one which has two things one either without atp or with presence of atp okay examples of proliferative breast lesions without atp include epithelial hyperplasia sclerosing adenosis and papilloma examples of proliferative lesions with atp includes atypical ductal or lobular hyperplasia the stromal or fibroepithelial ones include fibroadenoma and phylloid tumor and then the malignant lesions are either in situ carcinoma or invasive carcinoma okay so in the next few series of this particular tutorial i'll be discussing each of these entity in greater detail now today let us understand what is this fibrocystic disease this is a non proliferative breast disease it's a most common benign disorder usually occurring in around 20 to 30 years of age which is caused by abnormal response of breast to ovarian hormones basically these individuals presents with irregular nodularity and that's what we call it as lumpy bumpy breast with or without tenderness you no know, the, the patient might present with pain you can elicit tenderness occasionally it can be present you can i mean the patient presents with discharge from the nipple okay but what is important is that there is absolutely no risk of malignancy in a fibrocystic disease now what are the causes it's usually not known but there are certain proposals which include an exaggeration of normal response of the breast to the fluctuating hormones and the second one could be genetic because there is some evidence of familial occurrence as well three principal non proliferative changes which you find in histology is one cystic change which is often seen with apocrine metaplasia second one is fibrosis and third one is adenosis or does this cystic change cystic change these cysts are variable size they contain semi transparent brown to blue colored fluid you know when they are large and then they contain brown brown to blue colored fluid they are often referred to as blue domed cysts okay what is this fibrosis fibrosis is basically because one of these cysts might rupture and that leads to you know inflammation and fibrosis and thirdly adenosis means increase in the number of acini per lobule so this is a very characteristic example of fibrocystic change you can see variably sized dilated cyst lined by epithelium see this cyst can be lined by either flattened epithelium when the cysts are large or it can be lined by apocrine epithelium let me show you an illustration where you can find all the features these are variably sized cyst lined by either flattened epithelium or pulmonary epithelium or apocrine epithelium surrounding these cysts you can see the evidence of fibrosis this is your apocrine change okay you can make out that the cells are containing eosinophilic granular cytoplasm and this is adenosis what is that adenosis basically means increase in the number of acini per lobule remember this is not hyperplasia okay so it's basically increase in the number of acini the lining epithelium remains the same it's inner luminal outer myoepithelial that's all okay it's not about increase in the cellularity it's increase in the number of acini per lobule that's adenosis what is the importance as i told you absolutely no increase 
in the incidence of breast cancer in these patients how do you treat this patient most often treatment is symptomatic if the patient presents with pain you might give them painkillers or very rarely if the cysts within the fibrocystic changes are larger enough they might be benefited by surgical approach now what are the other non proliferative changes which we can encounter in the breast it is lactational adenoma again this lactational adenoma is a misnomer because this is not a tumor okay don't get confused by the word adenoma in this case this is a misnomer it is not a tumor because this is basically an exaggerated local response to gestational hormones present as palpable masses in pregnant or lactating women they regress after cessation of breastfeeding what do you see histologically you only see normal appearing breast tissue with lactational changes okay so this is not a tumor it basically an exaggerated local response to these hormones and what you find is only the normal appearing breast tissue with lactational changes so that completes today's topic so we discussed about the normal anatomy the functional components the classification and importantly the fibrocystic change thank you if you have liked this video hit the like button do comment don't forget to subscribe and don't forget to share if you find this video useful i will be coming out with many more topics in breast pathology in the next few no tutorials stay tuned thank you